Hey everybody, Travis here from Travis.media. I'm 38 years old. I'm married 13 years to a lovely lady. I have four kids, 11 and under. I'm bald, or I'm going bald. And four years ago, at 34, I learned to code. Okay, I went from not knowing any code to landing a, well, I freelanced for about two years, and now I work for a company as a software engineer. In this video, I want to tell you how I learned to code, how it wasn't too late for me at 34 to learn, and now 38. I also want to encourage you if you're kind of down about your job and are looking for a career change or you're learning to code and think it may be too late for you, stay tuned in this video because I have a lot of great tips for you. So let me give you my story real quick in a nutshell. I've worked a lot of jobs in the past, okay? Uh, this is just to encourage you because I know a lot of us have had like a dead end start. I had a dead end start. I wish somebody would have pointed me in the right direction or maybe I should have listened when I could have. But anyway, from my first job at 16 as a park ranger to working in an ice cream shop, to working at Target, to picking contact lenses off the shelf at Bosch & Lomb, to hosting, serving, and cooking in a steakhouse, and a bunch of other jobs, data entry and things like that. So around 2007 to 8, I moved from North Carolina back up to Virginia, where I had grown up, and I needed a job quick. So I got a job at this hospital. I think I was just answering phones or something, something for some money to support myself until I, I got something better, and they found out I was a computer guy. All right, so, oh, he's a computer guy and he can type fast. So they started getting me to do like data entry stuff. And eventually they moved me on to uh, the medical transcription team. So I was listening to doctors talk really, really fast and typing. And I did that for about four to five years. And then we moved to speech recognition. And being the computer guy, uh, they made me a uh, systems analyst in charge of the speech recognition system, which no, there's no coding or anything like that. Basically, I just oversaw the system, made sure doctors' voices were tweaked properly and all, all kind of stuff like that. So I did that for about four more years, and uh, it was a good job, and it was, it was, the, the pay wasn't that great, but it was good benefits, it was stable, and uh, honestly, 10 years of my life passed without me even knowing it. I think I only planned to be there like a year, whatever. About six to seven years into that job, I started blogging, just like a hobby blog. And uh, I bought this theme, and uh, you know, when everybody starts blogging, they want to change things on their site, they want to make things a different color, make things move around a little bit. And um, so I would be like, uh, I want to change this font to red here. And so I didn't know how to do it, I'd have to write the theme company. They would send me the little piece of CSS, I'd put it in. And then like five minutes later, I'd be like, well, you know, I think I want it, you know, yellow or something, well, not yellow, I think I want it brown or something and so I'd write them again how to make it brown and I kept doing this like I want to move this to the right I want to change this and uh, it just got annoying so I decided hey why don't I learn a little bit about this and so I started learning uh, HTML a little bit and enough CSS to where I could do some of the stuff myself and fell in love with it that's usually that's most people's stories you start to do a little HTML CSS you fall in love and I said, wow, this is a lot of fun. And so I started learning a little bit more online and said, I wonder if I can make this into a career. I wonder if I could do this for money. About that same time at my job, my uh, uh, company, there was a lot of talk about people getting outsourced, though nothing happened yet. So I decided to enroll in a boot camp. I enrolled in the block full stack developer boot camp and I started rolling with that and it was intense um, I was doing the full-time program while I was working full-time actually no it might have might have been the part-time I'm not sure it was like three to four hours a day though and um, that was great I went through HTML I went through CSS I went through JavaScript and um, I got some jQuery practice and some some uh, static site practice like Jekyll and it was great I really enjoyed it I had a mentor and I learned a ton and I fell in love with coding at that point well, about that same time, we did get outsourced. They outsourced everybody but me and my boss because we got a new system and it just took everybody's place. And everybody everywhere in the medical transcription world will get outsourced and has been outsourced. So it was coming. So at that point, I said, okay, they've outsourced everybody but me and my boss. And we got a new system coming next year. I think I got a year left. I got to get my act together. So uh, I got to the second part of the block course, which is the back end, and started learning Ruby. Ruby was great, but nobody in my city is using Ruby or Rails at all. 
So I started looking around, nobody's using it. Why am I learning Rails? Why am I learning Ruby? I look back now and I guess it is valuable to know that it's a good framework to learn. But at that point I was like, uh, I think I read in the fine print somewhere that if I were to quit the course about halfway through it, I would get half of my money back. So I was like, look, I, I can get you know, half of my money back and not have to learn this language that's not important in my town. And I can start just trying to find work. I already know, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and uh, I can start freelance. I can start picking up work. And so that's what I did. I quit Block, stopped going there, and I jumped on Upwork. And I took a few jobs on Upwork and just randomly applied for this job. And it was an agency out in Colorado. And they said, hey, why, you want to come on as a web developer? I said, sure. They didn't ask me to prove anything. They didn't ask for any portfolio or anything. They just wanted a developer. And so I jumped in there and I worked there for about a year as a freelancer. And so uh, I freelanced for them for a little while. And then I quit my job at the hospital because I was, they were giving me tons of work and I was bringing on my own clients at the same time. And that job, I learned a ton because I didn't, I didn't know a lot. They gave me stuff that I'd never done before. It was WordPress. Actually, let me back up a little bit. I did, I did uh, a course at Skill Crush. It was a WordPress blueprint course and it, it was wonderful. I mean, it was wonderful. I took all the parts that I needed, uh, learning about you know loops and um, the template hierarchy and all, all the stuff you gotta know about WordPress. I learned a lot about PHP. I learned about custom fields and all of this cool stuff. So I felt confident when I got this job because it was just WordPress. But still, they assigned me a lot of tasks I didn't know. So I did a lot of Googling and I grew a lot. They had a lead developer that was very helpful. He taught me a ton and I really enjoyed my time there and I can attribute where I'm at today to that place. But uh, I started picking up lots of clients and eventually um, I had a lot of clients and they were paying me a lot more than this agency was. And um, so I kept with the agency, but I eventually told them, hey, I, I'm trying to grow my own business. And uh, so I left them and um, I freelanced for about four more months after that and uh, did well, but um, ended up taking a software engineer role at a company out of DC called Flexwind. And uh, that's what I'm currently doing, and I absolutely love it. If you want to find out why I did that or see how my journey's going, I have other videos about that. So check it out. But I want to just give you a, a quick rundown. Now, I started that at 34. I had four kids, so I had to juggle my full time job, this boot camp, and my family. My wife was very supportive about the whole thing. Um, and so that was helpful, but it was tough. And so my whole point in telling you this is that I was 34 when I started learning to code. Now I'm 38. It's not too late. I made tons of bad choices. I went, what, 14, uh, from 18 to 38, 16 years of kind, of kind of doodling through life. Finally, I found out, hey, I love coding and I can get a job in it and it pays me pretty well and it's remote so I'm flexible and things are wonderful. So so now that I've given you my story, let me take a minute to tell you how you can learn to code and get a job or change jobs or whatever you want to do at 30 something, 40 something, 50 something, whatever. There's a series of steps you got to follow and if you follow them, nobody can be stopped. And here's my shameless plug and I'm totally unashamed to give it because I put a lot of time into it and I think it's very valuable. I put together a blueprint, a six month blueprint for anyone that wants to start off learning to code and go from that all the way to being a confident coder ready to land that job to start taking interviews. It's called the Learn to Code Blueprint course and you can find it at learntocodeblueprint.com. It is very cheap for the value you get and I put a lot of time into it. And like I said, it's broken down week by week on what you need to learn. It has, uh, it has the courses out there to take for each week and it just leads you in succession all the way through to becoming a confident coder. It also has lots of videos from myself helping you with certain challenges and offering some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Finally, and most importantly, there's a Slack channel where we talk our way through this, we help each other, we encourage one another, and we see every student make it to the end. That's the goal. And ultimately, again, it is very cheap for the time and effort that I put into it. So 
In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the structure of the course, and you don't have to take it. You can just take my advice right here and run with it. So here's what you gotta learn. First of all, you need to set a time limit. You need to be like, I'm gonna give myself eight months. Let's say I'm gonna give myself eight months to learn to code. You need to get a calendar, you need to set day one, and you need to set the end day. And you need to time out every week from start to finish what you need to do. And you need to go in this order. You start with HTML, go out and find it, HTML course and work all the way through it from beginning to end. Once you're done with that, do not visit HTML again. HTML is one of those things you're always working with, you'll always be practicing. So once you finish it, don't revisit it again. Once you got HTML, move on to CSS, which is making your HTML, your structure look pretty. Don't go learning CSS grid or CSS animations. Stick to the basics, the fundamentals. Be able to make your HTML look great and understand the CSS selectors and all of that stuff. So find a CSS course, do it start to finish, and move on. Next, you'll want to do JavaScript. You want to stay on this front end for a while. You want to do JavaScript. You don't need to worry about advanced topics like prototypes and the fetch API and things like this. Make sure you learn the syntax and make sure you're very comfortable in DOM manipulation. The DOM is everything. So take find a JavaScript course Take the course, start to finish. Don't say, well, this course isn't working for me. I'm gonna try this one, then I'm gonna try this one. This, I like this one better. And then you're 10 courses in, you're a year late. So find one course, do it start to finish, do your JavaScript. Now at this point, you can explore the back end, like PHP, WordPress, that's a good way to go. Find a PHP primer. It's a lot like JavaScript, except for it's server side, but the syntax is very similar. So you can do a short course on PHP, you can learn WordPress, something like that. But at this point, you're going to want to choose a specialty. So here's what you need to do. You need to find out in your city or your target location, wherever you want to be living, wherever you, you live or want to live, you need to find out what's in demand. So you need to go online, you type up the big businesses, the web agencies, all that stuff. Look for job openings and find out what the technologies in your area are. Then, from that info, find out which one you like most. Take a week and kind of look around, play with them a little bit, find out the one you like most, and then spend about a month specializing in one thing. That could be Python, that could be React, that could be uh, Java, that could be Angular, something, something like that. Something, an extent, well maybe not Java, you didn't do any of that before. Something, a JavaScript extension or a PHP extension or Python, anybody can pick up Python. So take a month to get a specialization done. Now take another month to build two significant projects with your specialization. So you're not gonna go copy somebody, you know, he did this, now I'm gonna follow along, he did this, I'm gonna follow along. You're gonna come up with two unique, yet easy, projects that you're going to work from scratch from start to finish you're going to do two of those you're going to put them on your portfolio and it's going to be great and then your final month you're going to put your resume together and you want to do a, you know a little course here and there on uh, interview practice and public speaking that kind of thing to get your confidence up so that's it html css javascript maybe a little php wordpress pick a specialization make two significant projects Get your resume ready and start sending out hundreds a day. Also, somewhere in there, I do this in my course, somewhere in there you need to learn Git, the basics of Git in GitHub. Uh, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. If you're 45 years old, it, it's eight months. If you start out at 45, you go eight months, you're still 45. If you're 35 and you pick, hey, it's gonna take me 10 months, start out at 35, 10 months later you're still 35, unless you had a birthday. So anyway, the main thing is, is to pick a time limit, set a schedule, and stick to it. Don't get sidetracked. And uh, if you need help with that, check out my course at learntocodeblueprint.com. Learntocodeblueprint.com. And um, there's a video there that explains the whole thing. And we're a Slack group and we have lots of fun in it. And I'd like to see you in there. But if not, follow this pattern that I just gave you. Go all out and you can learn to code. I did it. I didn't do it that way. I kind of stumbled around for a long time. I wish I would have, but I stumbled around. And um, anyway, I hope this was encouraging to you. Um, again, uh, I'm not 20. I'm not 22. I didn't start out right. I started out doing the wrong jobs. And now here I am, 38, finally getting somewhere where I should have been 16 years ago. So best wishes to you. Subscribe to the channel. There's going to be lots more videos like this. I have a lot to talk about. And uh, wish you the best.